All right, in this lecture, I just I want to do a short lecture that just cleans up an important point that we worked through in our lecture on the special linear, a special unitary group uh, in two dimensions. Oops, two dimensions, not three, and the general linear group in one dimension with the quaternions. When we first did our analysis in both of these groups, and we just worked on the metric preserving element of the unitary group, we ended up with four matrices, x0, x1, x2, and x3. And then when we imposed the requirement that it be the special unitary group, we, we went the special unitary group of two, and we don't, we don't always throw the C in there, but what we did is we lost x0, x1, x2, and x3. So this was the sort of the Lie, the Lie algebra had four dimensions for the unitary group in two dimensions, but the Lie algebra for the special unitary group in two dimensions had three dimensions. So an arbitrary mem member of the Lie algebra was now theta i x i, and here that included zero, and here it only went from i equals one to three. And if you remember, it was this constraint that the determinant equal one that proved that all theta zeros had to equal zero. So the parameter theta zero had to equal zero at all times uh, in order for this, uh, this to work. So the same was true in the general linear group with one quaternion. We started, we ended up with what, we, what was x0, x1, x2, and x3 which were all defined by minus one-half lambda uh, i, and then lambda zero was sort of kept separate. And it ultimately went away when we moved into the special, the special linear group one q. So the reason this is important is what basically is in order to find the the algebra of the special linear of the special unitary group and the special linear group we went through the algebras of the general linear group and the unitary group. So these are totally legitimately algebras in and of themselves. And to get a member of the general linear group you just have to exponentiate theta 0 x 0 plus theta 1 x 1 plus theta 2 x 2 plus theta 3 x 3. And because we've done our notation the way we have, the basis vectors here, x 0, x 1, and 2, and 3, and the basis vectors here are given the same expression. So this expression as a, as sort of a, as a typographical thing applies to this and to this. It's, if you apply it to this, you end up with an element, an element, of the unitary group, and if you apply it to the other one, you end up with an element of the general linear group 1q. Right. So the point is, is that we did all this work to figure out the exact expressions for members of the special linear group, and we could do the same work to figure out the arbitrary Given four numbers, theta 1, theta 0, 1, 2, 3, and 4, I can give you a member of the general linear group uh, of quaternions. And given four numbers, I could give you a unitary group member. But you get, there's actually a very nice simplification here. One thing that is not true for matrices is that the exponential or the ex, exponentiating a matrix A times a matrix B, right? Um, uh, the, that exponential uh, does not, does not equal, uh, wait a minute, wait a minute, what's confusing me here? That's, I'm writing this the wrong way, right? I should be writing the exponential of a matrix A plus a matrix B does not generally equal the exponential of a matrix A times the exponential of a matrix B. So how do we see that? Well, let's just go to the definition. 
And there's the definition. So let's just blow this thing up. I'm going to put it here um, like this. So say I broke this out into just, uh, I just limited it to third power. I mean, obviously there's more powers here, but let's see if we can see the problem that we'd face right here. So uh, this is the pattern you get. Uh, you know, I'm, I just literally multiplied it out, so I didn't put it in any order. The key is you have to keep the order of the matrices correct when you do your multiplication of this times this. So I get AB, I have to write it as AB, I can't write it as BA, because we can't assume that two matrices A and B commute. All right, so now compare this to the exponential, exponential of the sum. All right, the exponential of the sum looks, looks like this now, where we have to blow these guys up. And right away, we see the problem. I don't even have to blow this one up very much. In fact, I kind of over blew this one up. But if you just take the first uh, three terms, the first one is the zero term, you get the one. The linear term, you get one over a plus b, so you get a plus b. Then the square term, you're going to get one half a squared, one half b squared, and then the two cross terms are going to be a b over two and b a over two. So if you look at this, this term here, if you go to the other uh, part up here, you see a b, right? And the way we've done it, no b a is going to appear up here the way we've multiplied it out. So the only term that is uh, this cross term in AB is going to be this term right here. But this does not necessarily equal that unless A and B commute. If A and B commute, these two come together and equal that exactly. And this problem is going to happen for every single term in this product when you compare it with this. The only way this will ever match this is if A, if A and B commute. If A and B commutes, then the exponentiation of the sum of the two matrices equals the product of their individual exponentiations. Otherwise, it doesn't equal that. All right, so let's go back to the unitary group that, uh, so this is now the algebra of the unitary group for, uh, uh, of two by two matrices. Then before we impose so we've imposed the metric preserving condition, and we got these four uh, basis vectors for the unitary algebra, for the algebra U2. And when we applied the requirement for the determinant to be 1, we lost this x0. But let's go back to the point before we do that, before we lose that, where we have all four members of the uh, basis of the algebra. So now we have a four-dimensional algebra, and U2 is a four-dimensional, well, the, the group U2, right? Because remember, there's a group U2 that has, you know, it's a manifold, and the manifold is over R4, and it is only until we impose the, it, it isn't until we impose the unit, unit modulus determinant condition that we turn this into SU2, and then this becomes the algebra of SU2. But we're not going to do that. We're going to keep all four of these basis vectors. So that means the map from an arbitrary member of the algebra into an, a member of the group is given by the exponential now of theta mu x mu, where mu runs from 0 to 4, right? Mu runs from 0 to 4. But the point of this is, is well, that can be written as the exponential of theta 0 x 0 plus, plus theta i x i. Now understand that this is a matrix and this is a matrix. This is a ma and x 0 is defined through this. Remember we in for u2 we defined our basis to be i over 2 times the Pauli matrix and of course that was all done to give us, uh, to give us um, structure constants that we, we, we liked, right? So it was just an arbitrary change of basis. See, our natural basis was this guy, we thought. We started with the Pauli matrices, and then we got these guys through this prescription right here. Regardless, you know, whatever basis you choose, it's always going to be true that an element in the Lie group is going to be the exponential 
of an arbitrary member of the algebra, where this is no longer infinitesimal. This can be any size. So this I just break up into the two parts. I break up into that x0 part, and I break it up into the xi part. Now, what's important to see is that x0 comes from sigma 0, or sigma 0, which is the 2 by 2 unit, the 2 by 2 uh, identity matrix. Therefore, x0 is just equal to i over 2 times the identity. What's important about that is when we make this guy play the role of A and this guy play the role of B, we end up with X A plus B. But we, in this case, it will be true that it is equal to the product because this guy commutes with everything. It's the identity. It's a it's a constant times the identity. So now we can do this. So all of our work last time figured it out everything we needed to know about this. We know the full parameterization of this thing. And now all we have to do is figure out the parameterization of this guy, and we just multiply the two together. So in that earlier lecture on SU2, we evaluated this exponential. Remember, we came up with this parameterization of all the matrices that were in um, the group S, U, 2, C, right? And so that's what this part is. But now, we, because X0 commutes with everything, uh, I just have to calculate this, and then I just take this matrix and multiply it. In case this is confusing, right? There's a, there's a, this is the way it's split up, right? This is the, this here is the 1, 1 element, this is the 2, 2 element, this is the 1, 2 element, and this is the 2, 1 element. So the result there is you substitute in for x0 the definition that we were using earlier, which is um, i over 2 times theta 0. But theta 0 to the end is just theta, right? So that's going to pop out. So this guy, I mean, sigma 0. Sigma 0 is the identity matrix. So sigma 0 to the end just is a constant. So that's going to come out. And then this is a number, right? Theta 0, i over 2, that's just a number. So... Uh, Let's just break that down. So this, like I said, this theta comes out. The end goes away because it's just the identity matrix. And then what you're left behind with is this power series here, which is obviously just rewritten as the exponential of this number, this complex number, right? And ultimately, that is a matrix. So it's going to be e to the i theta over 2, theta 0 over 2, this is 0, because remember, theta itself is the sum of squares, right? So the theta 0 has got to be, the, be done correctly, e to the i, theta 0, all over 2, right? So that's the matrix that we put right up front there. So let me just, I would 
I can put this matrix, right? Uh, I'll erase that. And I will place this new matrix right there. And clearly what happens is the diagonal terms are multiplied by this, right? So you end up with an e to the i theta over 2. You basically end up with a phase shift along the diagonal of this guy. But the determinant of that thing in the end is not going to be 1. It's actually going to be some complex number of modulus unity, but it won't actually be 1. So uh, this, this product is no longer the special group. It is the unitary group. So I guess a more logical process would have been to develop the unitary group first and then specialize it to the special group. Um, Gilmore comes close to doing it, but he cleans it up quick. He, he takes that determinant, sets it equal to 1, eliminates this parameter fast, and then goes back and points out what I just pointed out. So I'm following his, his method here. So the same logic is applied to the, um, the general linear group, right? you end up with this exponential and you pull out just this guy, but now it's even easier because uh, the exponential is just of a real number. So you don't have to go through this, uh, this matrix process here. Now you may be wondering, well, why didn't you get rid of this I and split it up? And you could have, right? Remember, we all know that E to the I theta over two equals what we've done before. It equals cosine theta over 2 plus i sine theta over 2. I mean, we could have done that, and then, you know, that just would have replaced that and that, and you would have ended up with these trigonometric products, right? Uh, here you really can't. You have to break it up for this, as far as I know. But this part, you can leave it all tight, and this is basically shorthand for this, in a way. I mean, that's sort of famous. Okay, so that takes care of our understanding. I'll, I'll leave you to do this for yourself for the general linear group. It's easier for the general linear group than the unitary group because you got to remember with the unitary group, everything is, if you use these shorthand matrices here, this doesn't look like a matrix because you forget that this is a matrix, a one by one matrix. That's why I went back and rewrote it this way. Okay, so that explains the unitary groups from the special unitary groups. Um, and uh, uh, next time we will now start talking about some of the relationships between the different special, the special unitary group, the special orthogonal group in three dimensions, the special unitary group of two by two matrices, and the special linear group of quaternions of one by one matrices.